everybody. It's good to see everybody here. Hope you're all doing well. Hi Angela. Hi Jenny. Hi Lucy. Hi Karen. Okay, we'll get started in just a minute. Hi Tracy. It's good to see you. Okay, what's the time? All right. Okay, so we'll get started. So here is our card this week. So it is an easel card, which sits up like this, but can fold flat for um, posting or making a little box for, but it also opens out this way as well. So if you've got someone you'd like to send this to, you could pop some pictures in there if you like or some more writing or some little messages for them so that's our card today so what we need to do is start off with our black piece this piece here and we're going to cut that one to five by eight inches so if everyone can cut that to five by eight inches i'll just make that a bit smaller so five inches first and then you're going to flip that around so the long side is at the top and we're going to cut that to eight and a half, sorry. So five by eight and a half. Here we go. So this is five inches by eight and a half inches and we're just going to put this at the, top, the long side at the top of your scoreboard and we are going to score that at two and four. So two inches and four inches okay so five by eight and a half inches that we've cut it and then we're putting the long side at the top of the scoreboard and we're going to score at two and four great so we're going to fold this now so this first score line that you've done that the two inch mark we're going to fold that into a mountain fold so a mountain fold is pointing up like a mountain would so pointing up like that so that is a mountain fold and then the second score line that you did on the four inches we're going to fold that into a valley fold so it's going to go down into a valley so we've got a mountain fold here and a valley fold there and we're just going to push that all down so it folds flat and then I'm just going to burnish it with my stylus just so it folds and holds nice and flat there okay so you should have like a little z fold thing there going on so hopefully you've got that done there now what we want to do is we're going to grab this piece of paper here so this cards this paper that you've got here we're going to cut this one down to be a little bit smaller so i'm just going to remove this border first and um, don't forget to save these borders because you can use them for other things as well so just trim your border off so that it's a true 12 by 12 paper awesome okay so one of this piece here we are now going to cut down so it measures um what have we got so slightly smaller than our black piece so it's going to be four and seven eighths so if you bring it to four and seven eighths seven eighths is just one mark under your five okay so we've got five inches there's my pokey tool so we've got five inches here and it's just one of the marks under your five inches so four and seven eighths and then we're going to swing it round to cut at eight and three eighths so your three eighths is one mark under your eight and a half so the eight and a half is here and just come one mark under the eight and a half which is eight and three eighths so trim that down to that there we go. Hi Jocelyn, lovely to see you. Can't wait till next week either. It's going to be wonderful to be able to get back into life. Oh thanks Karen, I'm feeling much better today, thank you. <laughs> okay, so 
what we're going to do is we're going to put a bit of tape on the back of this piece and we're just going to pop it right over the whole black piece like that. So if you want to go ahead and put some tape on there. Hi Rabina. Hello Sue, it's lovely to see you and glad you could join us. So we're just going to put some tape around all four sides and I am going to put a couple of strips in the middle because we're going to bend in the middle of this piece so we just want to make sure that it's really stuck down well. Okay, so I'm just going to put a couple of strips of tape down this centre piece as well. So just to make, oops, just to make sure it's really stuck down and not going to move. <laughs> okay. Right, so I've put pieces of tape right around all four sides and I've just done a few strips in the centre there and I'm just going to take the backing off and we're going to pop that right onto that piece we've just done all the scoring on. I'm just going to go and grab a rubbish bin to put all my bits in so my poor mother doesn't have to vacuum everything up. I'll be right back. Okay, so this piece will go onto this one here. So just line it up so you've got a bit of a black border around there. Now we really want that to stick down because we're actually going to go back and score this again. So we want to make it really burnished down so it's nice and strong on there. So it's not going to go anywhere. Now, we want to put this back on our trimming board. And where we've scored those black lines, we want to score them again. So... I'm going to flip mine around so that I've got all this on the, the right hand side and I'm going to score it again at 2 and 4. So basically all I'm doing is re-scoring where I scored the first time. So I'm just going to score it 2 and what this does is it just gives us a nice score line on this pattern paper and then again at 4. So I've just re-scored on the front there. So now we can do our mountain fold again and another valley fold and that's going to help that all to sit down really lovely okay right so that's the card base so I'm just going to go ahead and show you how to do the inside piece now so I'm just going to put that aside over there okay so we want to now cut another piece of our black cardstock to three and a half by twelve Yep, so three and a half. So I'm going to put my short side at the top of my trimmer and I'm going to cut my three and a half first. So three and a half and I'm going to flip it around just to make sure this is 12 inches. Yep, perfect. So three and a half and 12 inches all the way down here. All right, so we're going to place this, this piece at the top of our trimmer or our scoreboard, whichever you're using to score with. And we're going to score this piece as well. So push it right up there if you've got one of these trimmers. And I'm now going to score it at 4 and 8. So we're going to score it 4 and 8. So you've got three even panels. So we've got one panel there, one in the middle, and one on the end there. So 3.5 by 12, long side at the top of the trimmer. We're going to score it at 4 and 8 inches. All right, so these, well, this one here, we're just going to fold on those score lines so everything folds into the center there, just like that. So now that's our little opening piece that goes on the front. So we now need to cut down, how many pieces? Five pieces of pattern paper to cover all of this. So we want one, two, three, four, and five. So we're going to cut five pattern pieces down to measure three and three-eighths. So I'm going to go to three and three eighths. So again, I've got my short side at the top here. So three and three eighths, which is one mark under your three and a half. So if you go to three and a half and come one mark back, you'll be three and three eighths. Now I'm going to cut this next piece at three and three eighths as well. No, I'm not. Sorry, 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 sorry. I'm not going to do that. We'll do this one first. So 3 and 3 eighths by 3 and 7 eighths. So 7 eighths, 3 and 7 eighths is one mark under your 4 inches there. So 1, 2, 
three. So there's three equal pieces there that are going to go onto my piece here. So we need two more of those. So I'm just going to put that aside. And this piece that we've got left over, we're going to do that at, what was it, three and three eighths again. So just one mark under the three and a half. So cut that down there and we're going to turn the long side at the top of the trimmer again and cut two more pieces that measure three and seven eighths. So one mark under your four again. So three and seven eighths. So two more of those. So one, two. Perfect. So now we should have five pieces cut out on there. And now I just want you to go ahead and stick them down to the front and all three of the inside and this outside piece here. Okay. So if you want to use glue, go ahead and use glue. Or if you want to use tape, use tape. I'm going to use tape just because I like tape. <laughs> I just find it easier to remove if I need to reposition something. Really looking forward to classes starting back up again next week. It's going to be really cool to see everybody again. It's been ages. Um, but um, we're hope as far as we know, we should be going down to level three, uh, sorry, level one on Monday. So if that goes ahead, then we'll be doing our classes next week. So Wednesday, Friday and Saturday. We've had to cut back on the Thursday class, unfortunately, because um, I'm just having to do a Saturday morning class in store, and then I have to do also three, two more online classes on Saturday afternoon. So I'm sort of going to need to have Thursday to prepare for all that. But hopefully it won't be all forever we'll hopefully be able to get Thursdays back again so if you want to book in um, we are doing a booking system now so if you do want to come along to class then just go onto our website and book into your classes you can either do a six week stint or a one week stint so the six week will give you the opportunity to have a seat in the class every day, every week for six weeks or if you can't make it during one of those six weeks then we'll make sure that we've got a kit for you if you just do them weekly then um, that's fine as well it just means that it might be booked up a bit quicker that's all so we're really looking forward to seeing you all back again it's going to be wonderful <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to pop that one on the middle there, just making sure I've got my front one on. So that one's going to go in the middle. You could do some writing on this metal panel, or you could put some photos on here. You could put a gift card in there if you wanted to. Um, it does make a really great men's card. If you wanted to do a men's gift card or something like that, it would be great. If I'm going too fast, please just... Let me know on the comments and I will slow down a bit. It's really hard to know how fast to go on live feeds. Here we go. So I've just got one more to go. So I've done the front panel here, the three in the middle, and I'm just going to fold that down and do my last one on this piece here. Don't forget we've got our scrapbook weekend coming up which will be really fun. If you're not a scrapbooker, that's fine. We've got a album class on the Friday night, which we'll be doing a nice album, and um, which will fit about 10 photos in. So you'll be able to use that to have a little, like a little brag book if you want. So if you're not into scrapbooking, that's fine. Um, we are still doing a class on the Friday night for those that don't do scrapbooking. So I'd love you to come along to that too. Okay. Right, so I've got all my inside pieces done, my outside bit, and this outside piece as well. So it will fold down like that. Now, I need to make sure that you can, if you've already stuck this piece down, don't stress too much. I did forget to put the braids in. But if you have stuck it down, then just, you can put the braids through there, it's fine. So I'm just going to lift that side up a little bit. Now, this is why I use tape, because even I make mistakes. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab two braids. 
and I'm just going to poke two holes down the side here. So what we're doing is this little bit here. So I'm just going to grab my pokey tool and I'm just going to poke a hole in there. And then another one down there a little bit. So we've got two holes. One here and one here. And I'm just going to pop my braids through there. Now you don't want to push your braids down too hard because we actually want them to stand out a little bit so that we can get our twine around there. So I'm just going to leave mine poking out a little bit and I'm just going to spread my pins back so it's nice and secure there. But I have left that bit of a gap. I don't know if you can see very well. It is sticking up a little bit there. Okay, so we want to do the same to the other braid as well. So pop that second braid in. Don't push it down too hard. Just split the pins at the back a little bit. Okay, so now we can stick that back down again. Sorry about that, guys. I did mess that up a little bit. So as you can see, my braids are sticking out just a little bit. So that gives me some room to be able to put the twine around there like that. Okay. All right, so now if you ha if you can't get this piece off, don't worry. Just pop it through the back here. We can find something that we can cover that up with on the other side there. So that's that piece done. Okay, right. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to pop this piece onto here now. And we're just going to use a little bit of tape or glue. And I'm only going to do the top half because I don't want this bottom half sticking down to here I just want it sticking to this top layer up here so I'm just going to pop that on there so, so just just that top half there but before I put it on there I am going to put my twine on so that it is going to stick on the back of this piece and come around to the front Okay, so that's done. I'm actually going to pull this off and get it all ready to stick down. And I am going to put my twine on the back here. Okay, so I actually want my twine lining up with that top braid there. So I'm going to, if I haven't, no, I don't think I've got a bit of tape. Yeah. I might just put a strip of tape down there just so I can hold my twine on as well. Right, so just line your twine up on the back and line it up with that top braid. So it's coming out the right hand side and it's lined up with that top braid there. So just stick that down the best you can. I'm just going to put another piece over that just to make sure that it's not going to go anywhere. Just double check, make sure it's really stuck down. Okay, I'm just going to take that off so we can stick it onto our card now. Right, so this piece here is now going to go onto this. So to get it in the middle, I'm just going to flatten that all down and I'm just going to line this up in the centre of the whole card. Like that. Okay. Now see, I've gone too far down on there, but because I'm using tape, I can just peel that off. There we go. Okay, so that's all on there. Okay, so that's the beginning part. So this piece now can wrap around those little brads and keep that nicely securely shut. So I'm just going to cut this down just a tiny bit because I don't need it that long. You could possibly use that for something else on your card if you want. Awesome. Hi Sheree, hi Jackie, good to see you. Oh, it's good to see you Jackie. <laughs> okay, right, the corner pieces I'm going to pop on now. So, these will just slip underneath there and that's just going to help hold those down. Now, I've used glue on mine and I've used the art glitter glue which is really good because you've got that fine nozzle. So I'm just going to put bits of glue on the raised areas. On there. And then I'm just going to slip that underneath there and put those onto the corners. There we go. So I'm just lining it up around the blue area, not the black one. 
Okay, so I'm just lining it up with my blue paper, not the black, and I'm just going to do that on this other side as well. Now I've put these on after I've put this on, just because um, I know I've done it in the instructions, but when I redid this card, I just found that putting it underneath this while that was on was actually holding it in place nicely while I was doing everything else, so it's actually just holding it there nicely for me. Okay. So just a bit more glue on this one, and I'm going to pop it underneath that bit there. So just on the raised bits. Awesome. So I'm just going to slide that underneath there a bit, and that's just going to hold it in place while the glue dries. Awesome. So now we've got those all lined up. So I've lined it up with the black, not the blue. So I'm just going to line that up with the blue piece. There. That's a bit better. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Right, so now what I'm going to do is we've cut out these pieces earlier. So we should have uh, three pieces cut out. That's my other one is here. So I've got the time is precious, the two clocks and the little cogs. Now the two clocks I'm going to actually... Uh, did I cut them apart? No, I didn't. I'm going to leave them together. I'm going to put a bit of foam tape on there, but I'm going to put my little brads through the hole in the middle first. So just poke a hole in the middle of both of those clocks. And then just grab the last two brads in your kit. And we're just going to pop those through the holes and split the pins on the back again. And just put the other brad in the smaller clock there. Now these ones can flatten out really well, they don't need to be raised up. Right, so I'm going to put some foam tape on the back and I'm just going to pop that on the front of my card there. So a bit of foam tape. a little bit. I'm just going to put another little bit there. Great, so this piece now just goes onto the front of your card there. So that one just goes on the very top of that front piece there. So right in the centre. Here we go. Here we are. Nice and easy. Okay, I'm just going to do the time is precious on the top here as well. Now I've, um, I didn't really want that one flat myself. So what I did is I just rolled that middle piece around a pencil a little bit to give it a bit of dimension there. So I just rolled it around a little bit. So you've got it like that and then I've just flattened this one out a little bit so it ends up looking a little bit like that so I'm going to put a bit of normal tape on this flat bit and put a couple of layers of foam tape on that middle bit so that when it sticks down it's actually going to be a bit 3D so a little bit of normal tape on the flat piece where the fishtail is so just along there and I'm just going to do a couple of layers in the middle piece there of the foam tape So I'm going to pop one in the middle. Oops. I'm going to take the backing off and put another layer on there. There we go. Yep, that's good. So now I've got two layers of foam tape and a little piece of a little piece of normal tape on that flat piece there. So that can go on above your clock now. There we go. So if you can see, that does give it a bit of a 3D look on there as well. Now you could put a little bit of glue or a bit of tape under that bit there to hold it down as well. So I'm just going to do a little strip of glue along there. 
and that just holds that side down as well. Awesome, great job everybody. Right, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you how to do this piece here. Now this piece does have to be 3D layered because that is going to hold this front piece up here. So what I've actually done is I've cut these two pieces off. So we've made that into two pieces of cog. Now I haven't cut through all my cogs, so I haven't cut all those little bits out, so you don't need to worry about that. Okay, now this piece here, this bigger piece, we're going to put a layer of foam on the back of that. So now I want it to sit about there. So when I put this piece down, I'm just going to line up where I want it to go on here. So I'm just going to pop it like that right there. So I'm just going to take the backing off. And that's going to go just around there. So I want to make sure that this is standing, it's not standing up really tall like that or it's not laying down too flat, so I'm just going to position that where I want it to go. And that's just going to go right along there. So that piece there that we're putting down now is what's going to help hold this up. Okay, so that little piece that you cut out earlier, I'm just going to put some glue on the back of that and I'm just going to pop it under there a little bit just so it gives it a bit more look on there. So I'm just put a bit of glue on there. I'm just going to pop that underneath there. Okay, so you guys are doing so well. Right, that's basically the card. Now I am going to show you how to do these little um, spiral flowers. Now some people use dies for these, but I'm not going to use a die because I actually want them to look a little bit shabby chic and a little bit rough around the edges because it is a men's card. I did want to put a flower, a little flower element on there, and don't be afraid to do that for men's cards. They they actually don't mind. <laughs> but I wanted these ones to look a look, little look a little bit more roughed up and a bit more edgy. So whatever you need to you do need to have you do have these two pieces left over. So what I've gone and done, if you want to, just do a spiral with your pencil. Can I see that? So we're just gonna draw a spiral like that and then we're just going to cut that spiral out so don't worry about it being perfect or not perfect we, just, we really want it to be quite rough if you're confident to do it without a pencil mark then go right ahead so we actually need three of these I know if some of you might be a bit nervous about doing this but just don't think about it just do a spiral <laughs> Yeah, so we're just going to cut these into a spiral. They don't have to be too big. And then you want to go ahead and do two more of these. Okay, so I'm just going to cut this so that it's nice and square down the bottom there. So that's all there is to that. So you've just made a little spiral there and I'm just going to cut out two more because we want three of these. So use the pencil if you want to draw your spiral and honestly don't think about it too hard. Just grab your pencil, start sort of up a little bit and just do your spiral. And it really does not have to be perfect as that is not perfect at all. So we actually don't want it to be perfect. So just go ahead and cut around that one as well. The more unperfect it is, the better your flower is actually going to look because it will be a little bit rugged and messy. So don't, please don't worry about how bad you think your spiral might look. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to cut this flat piece here. So there's number two. So go ahead and do the last one. So I'm just going to, because I haven't got much left here, I'm just going to do a really little one. But you do have this piece left as well if you want to cut out of that piece as well. So I'm just going to freehand this one without drawing it first. So I've started cutting from one side instead of starting in the middle. 
and I'm just going to follow that circle all the way around until I get to the centre. Okay, so I've just cut that freehand and I started cutting from the outside here, so I started cutting right round that way. If you're using a pencil, start from the middle and work your way out. If you're just cutting straight away, work from the outside and work your way in. Okay, I'm just going to give you like a few seconds to carry on with that just in case you're having a bit of trouble. If you have trouble with it, you do have this extra piece left over if you want to try again when you're not trying to follow through with this with me. Okay, so you will need your glue handy for this. So I'll just give you a few seconds longer. Okay. If you haven't finished your, uh, your spirals, that's fine. We'll just I'll just show you how to do them so that if you want to carry on doing them later, that's fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the blue side is facing up to us. So anything that you want showing of your flower, see I wanted my blue side showing, so my blue side is facing up. If I wanted this showing, then this side should be up when you come to fold it. So I want my blue side showing, so I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to start, I'm just going to break the fibres with my thumbnail on that very edge there. So all I'm doing is using my thumbnail and just breaking those first little fibres just to get it started to curl. So we're going to start from this outside edge and we're going to curl it in. If you have a quilling tool you could go ahead and use that as well, that's all fine. I just find that I find it a bit easier. Now I find it easier to start rolling it in and I don't want this all poking up so I want it all to be fairly even. So I just pop it between the curling part between my thumb and my finger and then I just twirl with my other hand and that keeps it nice and even. So just keep twirling until you get right to the very edge and we'll just get your glue ready to go. So just keep twirling in right around and I'm just going to let it go a little bit so we get a little bit of a flower going on. Now I'm just going to hold it there and I'm going to put a big blob of glue on that little circle there. So big blob of, blob of glue and then I'm just going to push that onto the back there so that all the inside pieces are going to stick onto that glue. So I'm just going to hold that for a second so if you want to carry on trying to twirl that round go for it. So you actually want to do that to all three of these pieces. So just whoopsie daisy. So I'm just holding my glue there just so it doesn't come apart. So that's one flower there. So they do look a little bit messy and but that's exactly the look I wanted for my men's card. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one now. So again, I'm just going to break the fibers on that that very last edge piece here with my thumbnail just so that it helps us get that that folding nice and easier started. So I'm just going to start folding it in in a circle there with my fingers. Now I'm just going to hold it with my thumb and my pointer finger there between the two and this hand's just going to curl it until you get to the end. So the reason I'm doing it with my fingers like that is so that it keeps this middle piece down because we actually don't want it to roll where it's coming up like this. So we, we don't want it to poke up in the middle there, we want it to stay nice into the centre. So holding it between those two fingers just helps to keep that centre piece down. So I'm just going to keep rolling right to the very end. So just go slow, there's no rush. So just keep fold, just keep rolling until you get to that end piece and I'm just going to hold it there, fold that piece back a bit and just get some glue underneath there. And then I'm just going to let it untwirl a little bit and then just pop it down into that glue. Oh have a nice trip Jackie, I hope it all goes lovely for you and we'll, hopefully we'll see you next week. Okay, so that's my second one. 
Okay, so I'm just going to do the last one now, but you just carry on at your own speed. You can do these later if you want to, and we're not on any time restraints. So I'm just going to break the fibers again with my thumbnail, just so that we can start that rolling easier. So I'm going to roll again, nice and tight to start with, so I've got a nice tight in the middle there. And I'm just going to put them between my two fingers again, so that's my rolled piece, and I'm just going to roll it between my fingers and I'm going to keep pushing my fingers together so that this middle piece stays in the middle. That's it. So just keep rolling it through. So I'm just using my thumb to push that middle piece back down if it comes starts coming up. Okay, so I'm just going to hold that and I'm going to put some glue on that little bit there. Now I do put quite a bit of glue here because we want all those middle pieces of our flower to hold down into that glue. So I'm just going to let it go a little bit and then just pop it down into that glue. And I'm just going to hold it there until it dries a little bit. Okay. There we go. Now if you really wanted to be clever and make it more flowery, you could actually bend these these back a little bit just to give it a bit more of a flower look to it if you like. So just you could go ahead and bend all that back if you wanted to, but I'm, I'm not going to bother with that. So those are our three flowers and they all look completely different. Some of them are good, some of them aren't so great, So, but we really didn't want them to look perfect. I just really wanted some real shabby, messed up sort of flowers there. So I'm actually going to go ahead now and I'm just going to glue those onto the front of my card. So my, mine are going to go here, but you can pop them wherever you like. So I'm going to put quite a bit of glue on there because I want them to stick down really well. So I'm going to put one right there and then I'm going to put another couple on here. Oops. There we go. Whoopsie daisy. Right. So now I'm going to pop that one about there, and my last one's going to go about there, like that. So lots of glue on because we really want it to stick down. Pop that one there. Awesome! Okay, so that was your card done. You guys have done really well. So it folds flat like that. Now because our flowers are a little bit raised up, you can squash them down a little bit if you want to, or you could make a little box for it if you wanted to send it like that. But it is a little bit raised up, but don't forget that it does sit up like that so that it's a nice easel card and folds flat. And you can just pop whatever you like on the inside here as your photos or a little wording or some gift cards or anything like that. So that was our card. I hope you managed to keep up a little bit. And I'm sorry if I did go too fast. I'm just going to go and grab my other card for next week. So this is our card for next week. So this one here um, does do a little bit as well. So what it is is that you can pull this little tag out and on the back you can pop a gift card on there or you could do your writing on there or some special message on there so that pops into that pocket with the little window there so when we lift that up we're going to pull this down pull that back down and lift that one up and then this can go in the middle so you could do a sentiment stamp or some writing there and then you have that little tag as well to do so just to push it down again we're just going to fold the flap down Push that right up, fold the flap down, and then we're going to bring it to the centre to hold it in place. Okay, so that's our card for next week. So if you want to go ahead and order that, we've got those online ready to go, and we can send those out first thing on Monday for you. Um, it does come with a full set of instructions as well. If you want to go back over the video and watch this later for a little bit, so you can stop and start and get a little bit easier for you, it's going to be on our Facebook page um, in about half an hour. Thank you so much everybody for joining me and I hope to see you next week. Thanks everyone. Bye.